Well, Brian, if this was the UN, we'd be present and voting. I'm going to vote for wine and cheese. Greetings, everybody. I'm Brian Singh from Brian Stable. And I'm Isaac Bignall from Say Cheese. And today we are going to be pairing wine with cheese. And specifically today, we are going to one of my favorite Canadian wines. I know. Uh, so Canada, you think, not necessarily a wine powerhouse, but well known around the world for the ice wine, maybe for some of the indigenous types of uh, varietals, such as Foch is one, and Bacca Noir is another. But one of the things that we're going to be going to the Okanagan, and we're going to be going to Lariana Cellars, and this is from the Asoyers region, and this is a region that looks a lot like the Dolomites, as well as the Rhone Valley. <laughs> I know, and what's even more fascinating about this one, Larry Anacellus is literally on the border, and there's a road. And sometimes on that road, I've actually seen chickens cross it. <laughs> so you, now you know why the chicken crossed the road. <laughs> to get the Viognier. <laughs> to get the Viognier. Anyhow, so this is, um, why is this one of my favorite wines? It is totally unexpected because it is this very small vineyard in right on the border, as I said before, and it's five acres only. It's a tiny vineyard. I will encourage you to get on the mailing list because very rarely would you see this wine in stores. And it is well worth it. Online it's about $25 and to get a case it's maybe about $310. But yeah. Huh. But this is world-class Viognier. And we're gonna get and we're gonna break it down. Um, anyhow, Viognier, few people will realize this, it's actually quite an old varietal. It, uh, it goes back to actually uh, the Dalmatian coast of Croatia. Really? Yes, I know. Maybe it should have black and white spots. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of dumb. Yeah. <laughs> hey oh, and uh, what is, uh, this is a wine that is typically done in a fresh style. It is, very rarely would you be able to do an aged Viognier. You get two years max out. The only really age worthy Viognier that you'd be able to get is from the Condro region of the Northern Rhone. It's almost rock up there. <laughs> so those grapes, uh, they're old vines, the grapes struggle to grow, so they really bring a lot of uh, oomph that is going to be able to be aged for a long time. Viognier is typically noted for its aromatic qualities. It is typically a mixing grape. Uh, they sometimes mix it with Syrah, known as Cote Roti. And the odd thing about it, it's not necessarily about blending it to soften the, the red wine. It helps stabilize the color. I know, a little, little interesting fact there. Um, Viognier's are typically noted for their stone fruit characteristics, as well as the minerality. And because this one is from the Asoyers region, it's gonna have some unique characteristics. Oh, totally. Okay, so let's give the wine a sniff and check out its nose. Oh, wow. <laughs> right off the bat. All right. Oh. So this is from 2021, and keep in mind, 2021, we had the heat dome in Western Canada. That's right. So these, these grapes were under <laughs> a lot of stress, as well as there were wildfires. Hmm. So you can detect a smoky note on there. Totally. Um, it's still, you, the minerality just is cutting them. Beautiful. And beautiful. Absolutely just stunning. And uh, the, um, the other thing too is no oak on this. Mm -hmm. It's uh, because again, uh, when you're looking at how they age Viognier, it's always going to be an enclosed vessel mm. because oxygen really destroys Viognier quite, uh, quite easily. So this one is actually fermented in a concrete vat that's shaped like an egg, and I will put a video up on that. Uh, that's but, like the Romans, right? Yeah. Huh. So it is, well, did the Romans have concrete? Romans invented concrete. There you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You know, they see that all education actually comes in handy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they, they built the column and they built concrete and then they turned it into wine. Yes, they did. <laughs> right, we use it for it. Uh, so uh, this is very aromatic. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, this perfume note to it. Mm -hmm. And that's another element that you pick up on, uh, like a lot of white flowers, mm -hmm. right? You get honeysuckle, mm -hmm. you get a bit of acacia on there. 
Even Rose, I get Rose too. Yeah, you got a bit of Rose in there too? You know, nothing earthy, nothing other, uh, just like uh, good minerality, a lot of uh, stone fruit. An alpine meadow. Yes, it is. And even, we have those in DC too. Yes. Those, yeah. Anyhow, let's give it a taste. Woo! Yeah. That's world class beyond oh, Thanks. It is. Okay, so one of the things that you traditionally find with Viognier, there's an oily characteristic. It's a, it's a little bit heavier, but this one is, this is perfectly balanced. Totally. It's really, not light, but it's just well integrated and it still has that big, rich tongue character, but mm -hmm. not in an oily sense. Okay. Isn't it surprising, even for BC, that they are producing Viognier like this? Absolutely. And for the price point, it, it, it's, it's hard to beat. It right? really is. And one thing, you know, just as a, as a point of personal craving, a nice grilled or uh, pan fried halibut. Mm. A little bit charring up. You know what I was thinking? I just had some the other day. It's, stur it's sturgeon season. Something like that as well would be oh, very wow. beautiful. Smoked way. sturgeon? I actually just pan fried it with a little truffle beurre blanc. <laughs> that would be beautiful. That yeah. would go really well. So when you're thinking about seafood, this is a beautiful wine for that. <laughs> I know, we, as we get carried away, because again, this is a wine that's just meant for food. Oysters? Oysters too. Ooh. Yeah, you get it. You know, yeah, the acidity compared to typical Viognier you get from the Rhone Valley, yes. the acidity is much higher. Yeah, there, uh, I find, I've actually had a few other VCs, Vionniers, and I don't find them nearly as heavy. All right, but this is beautifully well balanced, beautiful weight, good acidity, lovely length on it. Mm -hmm. This is just a wine that's just meant to be drunk right now. This is a yeah. summer wine that you should be enjoying, even with like grilled chicken, grilled veggies, nothing too uh, charred because that would kill the flavor of the wine, and you want, really want to work with the delicate uh, aromatic notes on there, yeah. and you'll be very happy. Yes. So we're here to talk about cheese. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's. Uh, what do you have for us today, Isaac? We have a, a real treat. This cheese is a wash rind, so that means the orange style, and then this band here with the little rubber bands actually to keep it on, this is spruce. So this is Quebec, it's called Adore. It's from this really interesting producer along the Ottawa River. Um, and they're trying to emulate a style out of the Jura in um, the Golden Mountain. So the Golden Mountain straddles both the Swiss and the French Jura. And it's called Vacherin Mondor. And it comes, it's about this big. You can get larger varieties, but in Canada we get them about this big. It's about a pound of cheese wrapped in spruce again from the region in a pine box. And they're the most beautiful things. You can put them in the oven, you, or you let them sit out all day, 24 hours. And I once almost had an argument with a customer about that. He was insistent that he would smell up his house, and I was insistent I wouldn't sell it. <laughs> I won, and his wife thanked me the next day. <laughs> you know, such is the power of cheese, isn't Exactly. It? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to sell something like a premium and then have them ruin it, or, or not appreciate it its full value, right? right? So this has been out for about four hours, and uh, we'll try a bit here now, Brian. Okay. Mm. Oh, my word. It just, like... Sweet spruce. It's not a, often those words go together. Isn't that so true? It is. The, okay. It's spruce is just front mm -hmm. and center on here. This first thing you pick up. Grassy and the cream is coming out because it spent enough time on the counter. Shall we taste it? Oh yeah. No, I'm I'm just lost in the smell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. It's so luscious. You get a bit of like more like broad forest with the spruce, a touch, a touch of smoke, but not smoke, but like that foresty smoke. It's actually not even that high in fat, but it tastes like it is. Yeah. There's a um, almost gingery element mm -hmm. to it on the on the middle of palate. Totally, I get like deep roasted bread and butter. Yes, that's behind that. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating. Actually, you know, I one of the things that I know that works really well with Viognier is ginger. Huh. As a way... <laughs> I know. We find it so let's see if this works well together. I'm quite excited to try this. Okay, let's get a taste of the cheese. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. That's really good. Oh, you know, who would have thunk a Canadian cheese and a Canadian wine? could do this. It, it, it's just like the <laughs> essence of old world pairing. They're yeah. Match made in heaven. They're so beautiful together. 
And you know, it does play off of that aromatic, spicy note, mm -hmm. which is totally tamed. And uh, the interesting thing with the Viognier, it, it goes over the wine on the front and middle of the palate and falls off a cliff. And that acid just keeps washing back. Mm -hmm. And the cheese keeps giving and the wine just keeps giving. Normally the pairing in Canada, it costs about $100 a bottle to go with the Vacheron Mondor. It's called Vignon, a very special wine. We'll have to get into that in another episode. Right. But for $18 and $25, your guests will be wowed for like you can feed eight with this on the cheese course. And that is, that's crazy value. It's and, intense. And it's a unique pairing. It is. This is not something you'll get every day right. or some might even not even get in their lifetime. Right. So. Yeah, and again, this is a special occasion time to get together and get friends and pick up some uh, Viognier, pick up this cheese and try it out. You know, even if you want to go and try with a Viognier from Australia, they do some rock solid Viognier down there. I uh, do one from, I know, the Yalumba Viognier for 20 bucks or so is fantastic. I know, and, and it's readily available. Give that a go at some point. Maybe we'll do a pairing with that one. Uh, but with this cheese, uh, you know, like I'm just so impressed with how well this works together, mm -hmm. right? You know, like even before when I was craving uh, fish, mm -hmm. this is one that you could go and say, I got a bit of wine left over. You know, I know that some people talk about having cheese with uh, fish, mm -hmm. but as a course, this will work well. Oh, totally. Right? And I, you, go ahead. But you could even, what they do is you bake them, so you could slash an X in this, pour a splash of this from the night before, and just toast in the oven for maybe 10 minutes at this size. Uh -huh. And once you cut off the top, as you serve it like that, I don't, the top is edible in Canada. It's not traditionally, but that's why I did it out of tradition. Uh -huh. It's bubbly, it's like fondue, but way more. What I'm thinking about is as we're in the midst of summer, even some fresh peaches. Mm. Some fresh peaches dipped in that. Mm -hmm. I and mean, you could actually do BC or Ontario peaches. Stay, keep it Canadian. There you have it. Yeah, and you know, like I'd even think apricots too. Absolutely, I, I would actually prefer apricots to this. I yes. think it'd be better with the the pairing. Right. Peaches might be too intense, you know. Yeah, but you know, like again, keep trying it out mm -hmm. because there's a lot of very complementary flavors that are not typical in a wine pairing mm -hmm. that you can do with this wine. Totally. Anyhow, so go out there, you know, get on Larry Anasella's <laughs> list, okay? They're not paying me to say this, no. but I'm one of their biggest fans. And believe me, you know, if you do go to the Okanagan, go to Naramata, uh, because there's a couple hotels that have the wine uh -huh. and, and they're serving it there. There's a liquor store in Penticton. They may sometimes stock it, but the best way to do it is get on their mailing list. Yeah, you will be guaranteed to get it and you will get one of Canada's best, if not what, the flagship Viognier of the country. Anyhow, folks, go out there, keep experimenting with wine and cheese pairing. Taste the world. <laughs>